Hello, this is a quick tour of my pumping station down on the orchard and I, I just every year I have to reset the system up because I can't let it freeze so I'm just going to kind of walk you through it and let you see what I've got. The core of it is the electrical control section because I have to run it from a generator and that in turn has to manage the pumping system because the pump is back here buried underground this is the pump control box which is just the starter caps and things like that um, I elected not to have them installed in the pump because if I had a failure they're a lot easier to change when they're above ground uh, everything is in rigid conduit uh, buried that's like schedule 40 real pipe uh, galvanized steel uh, there's uh, one a descender that goes to the well cap. Another descender comes up and it rises up to this electrical control section, which has three portions. One is a 30 amp twist lock connector. That is a standard generator, 200, 120 volt, 240 volt uh, twist lock that provides both the neutral and the ground. The ground is really important for safety. Above that is a, a simple 240 volt breaker, uh, a means to disconnect in National Electric Code jargon. And above that is the actual control box with the metering and the control relay. The control relay is, you'll see an umbilical here that goes down to the pressure switch that's on the volume tank here. And that controls the power that is coming from the generator when there's a call for water pressure it reroutes the power to the um, submersible pump. So it's actually pretty straightforward, simple enough that I was able to draw a schematic on the inside of the cover to the control box. More on that later. The outflow of the main volume tank, which is just a captive air volume tank that was given to me for free, so it's very affordable. There's a fluid field pressure gauge. You can just make it out here. There's a gate valve here. Uh, the gate valve was affordable. Um, all the metal, this metal you see here, a lot of the fittings here, and these risers, these are all stainless steel. Never want to deal with them again. Uh, the metal on the filtration system, stainless steel, and then otherwise it's plastic. This piece, you know, really is disposable, replaceable, but it serves the purpose of keeping any kind of solids from getting into the irrigation lines. So the water comes out of here, goes through a pressure regulator, actually a flow rate regulator right here that provides back pressure to the pump. It's a very shallow pump. Our water is within five feet of the surface. So I'm only, I have very little head on it. So that keeps me from overspeeding the motor on the electric pump. That water feeds the flows through a gate valve, a one-way check valve into the volume tank. Outflow is controlled by the gate valve. It goes through progressive screens, a coarse screen and a fine screen. I believe this is a 100 and this one's a 50. Uh, these are made by Toro. They're fairly common. Uh, all of this plumbing is inch and a quarter. I think this is larger, but this is inch and a quarter. The manifold is inch and a quarter to handle the flow rate. I can up the flow rate. That was not a problem. I'm just have it scaled back to what I need. These flexible hoses have quick cam locks on them, similar to what you'd see at a fueling station. And the reason for that is simply there's no threads. It's not a problem. You just lock them on. When I set this, shut the system down for the winter and I've depressurized, I've drained everything, I just take these two ends. I, this comes off. This fitting here connects to the tank directly. This goes into the barn to be stored dry. And these two ends fit one another. They're opposing male, female, so I can't, no one could get confused and hook them up to the wrong standpipe. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Let's go on to the next frame. Okay. This, that pipe comes through a union right here. The union's dripping because I only hand tightened it. What's really important is there's a check valve here so that when there's pressure in the tank, I can actually turn off the pump and disconnect this hose and I wouldn't get hosed down by the water. It just allows it in. On the tank side of the check valve, 
is a pressure switch. This is standard 3050 PSI pressure switch like you would have for a home well pump. This one's kind of unique in that this one, this check valve was a little difficult to find. <clears throat> it has a Schrader fitting on it, like if you wanted to pump air into your system. I don't have that, it's just capped. But it also has a, a quarter inch fitting on there so that I could thread on the pressure gauge. That took a while to find. Enough said. But all very important to how the system works. <clears throat> Power from the generator and control circuit <clears throat> both plug in. This is, a st this is an aircraft connector. <clears throat> electrical aircraft connector, it goes down to the pressure switch that I just showed you. Uh, and that goes up to the relay box that's on the very top of this power pole. This is the 30 amp 12240 twist lock. It's a four pole connector. This, is, this whole assembly is the ground because it's buried everything else. So I don't really have a dedicated ground rod. This thing is the ground. Looking again, you can see this is the outflow going in back, the pump outflow going into the tank, the outflow of the tank going through a gate valve. The thing with the gate valve is you only have to crank it just a, a wee bit. And in this case, I have full flow. <clears throat> I would have kind of liked to have put a ball valve in there, but I couldn't find one. And again, this is eBay, wait two months for it to show up stainless steel. Never could have afforded this stuff if I bought it over the counter domestically. This hose here that you see hooked up to this airline is I am currently charging the system. And that is I, I fill it with water to a certain point and you can see it by the sweat line on the tank. And then I'm using air from an air compressor to bring it up to the rated 50 PSI. Actually, I bring it up to 60 PSI because I wanted to push that chill line down a little bit. But that's how I keep it topped off. If I, in the course of the summer, I see that sweat line starting to move up and get within a foot of the top of the tank, I'll come back, drain it down part way, and I'll put more air pressure in it. What happens is I leave water in the tank between operations and some of that air dissolves into the water, so it consumes it. <clears throat> These are the two Toro filters. That water leaking there is from this bad seal that just isn't worth it to me to fix anymore. But these are screens. What I can do is when I turn off the pressure and I remove these end caps, crack that, and it flushes out all the solids. And what the solids are typically a little bit of iron shavings that come off the well casing. So the pump picks them up, shoots them up. And this is a galvanized tank, but there's still an iota of corrosion inside of it. So I get these little chips flying through. I don't want them in the irrigation lines. I don't want them clogging my emitters. So the 50 screen and 100 screen take care of that. This is a pressure regulator. It can handle up to 18 gallons per minute. I'm running 20 gallons per minute based on the flow regulator. Now, this tank could certainly put out more than 20 gallons per minute because that's the regulation going in. But uh, it limits it. So even when I'm at 50 PSI, it's regulating it down to 30 PSI. 30 PSI, it's coming out at 30 PSI. So the advantage to that is I'm not putting really hard pressure on my drip lines, that half-inch orchard tubing. It's getting low pressure. I probably could have gone with a smaller pressure regulator, but I've got some very long runs in this system, so I want to have operating pressure. Wow. Come to think of it, it's about a quarter mile away. So when it runs through all the everything, I have good pressure everywhere throughout the system. So it's, it's kind of like designing an electrical system. So here you can see it, 30 PSI. Yep, the coupling stainless steel. All of this is run by uh, an, a portable fuel generator that stays out there. Here's a, the cover that stays on it when I'm not using it. Gas generator. Uh, again, the 30 amp standard twist lock connector mates to the front of it. Uh, benefit to having this generator is that 
when I've been in a pinch, I've used it to run the house or to help a neighbor run their house. So it's a really nice standby generator. Here's the manifold that's going off to the rest of the irrigation system. And here you can the quick, the cam lock. It's just no threads. You just pop it on, lock the handles back. It stays on. I'm showing this one. This is really important. It's a 6,500 watt generator. The startup current for the submersible well, although the generator I had before was smaller and theoretically should have handled it, it was killing the voltage regulator in it. So even though this is a 240 volt submersible pump, which is balancing the generator perfectly, and it's drawing about 12 amperes, if I will see it, no, it's drawing about 12 amperes at full load, it needed a bigger generator. And this generator handles it just beautifully. But when it, the pump turns on, you can hear it loading. As a benefit, I have four 120-volt outlets on it, which is what I'm using to run the air compressor today. And it has a 100-watt, which would be 8-ampere, 12-volt outlet. I don't know why you'd want to use this, unless you were charging a battery or something, but seriously overkill. You'd be better off plugging in a regular battery charger into this, but you have it if you want it. You know, there it is. On off switch, which I rarely use uh, because it's out in a hot area, I turn off the fuel supply and run it dry so I don't lacquer the bowl of the carburetor. And this is an add on, it's an elapsed time meter, so I get run hours. I can look at it and keep track of how long I've been irrigating for that session. And then again, I look at it and go, it's time to change the oil. Uh, fuel gauge here runs on standard gasoline from the pump. It's okay to use it with uh, gasoline that's had ethanol added to it. They, it's ethanol rated. This is um, something unique. Not many people do this. I have my $15 from China power analyzer. That's showing me the current generator voltage, 243 volts. Nothing is on right now. This is idle current. So three hundredths of an, of an amp. And really the power that's being drawn right now is from this thing, um, which is not quite half a watt. There's a little resistor inside of this thing that gets hot and it colors the display. So I need to fix that. This shows that since I've installed the system, I've run 27 kilowatt hours of power through it. Now what's really important here is this. This is connected to the pressure switch on the tank. And when the pressure switch says it's low, it energizes this relay. And this relay, in turn, passes that 240 volts on to the submersible well pump. This is what's doing the work. And it does it, of course, in through the means to disconnect the circuit breaker. And just a nice clear shot of that that reading it really comes in handy. Uh, when I had the other generator, I started having problem. The numbers went crazy and it, it really helped me to troubleshoot the system without having to bring any test equipment with me, just a screwdriver to take the cover off. When I first run the well in the spring, I run it wide open without the hose connected and I just flush it out. I don't know if I need to do that. I just feel like I oughta, so I do. Uh, again, you can see the pressure switch and that umbilical is running right here going up to the control box. So it's a very important part of this. This thicker cable here is the main power cable from the generator. This here is a backflow pressure monitor for me. And that gives me confidence that the flow restrictor right here is working. Just another picture of the water shooting out. Ah, this is fun. Okay, it doesn't take very long. So, I wanted to share that with you. Uh, I have a lot of water here. The reason this water isn't coming out even more vigorously is the, the flow restrictor. 
but that's a four thousand dollar well i don't know how much it would have been total i'd have to go back to the books when you start adding on all this stuff in my effort for installing it it was a very significant investment those two stainless steel risers that go down are sunk they go down two feet and they're sunk in concrete and my rationale for that was things get bumped and i just did not want plastic above the surface that stainless steel it will dent it won't bump it won't break so i hope you found this useful thank you